Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Adobe Live. I am your host, Jesse Showalter, and uh, this is the XD Daily Live. So we're gonna be doing some UI and UX design. I'm excited to be here. I've been doing a lot of daily creative challenges, but I get to do the day, the, the Adobe Live. So I'm really, really excited about that. Got lots of people already in the chat. We've got uh, Ayush, we have Paul, Lamont, Lena, Aria, uh, Voodoo Val is here, of course. Raphael, Lamont, uh, man, there's so many people. Julia's here. Man, Matt Wood says Jesse's back. That's right, I'm back. I am back. Uh, got, woo, all right, Francisco is in the house. Lots of people hanging out and joining us gonna be a lot of fun I get to be here today get to be here tomorrow and you just saw Paul Tranny let's talk about just for a second overcoming right just overcoming adversity my man Paul Tranny making it happen here's another one of my my, my man making it happen Howard Pinsky's in the chat too Got lots of people hey when you're in the chat tell me where you're coming from tell me uh, where you're coming from and what you love to do on a Monday that makes you feel better about it being Monday, especially this kind of Monday, like an isolated Monday. Let's just be real. Um, it's cool that the world goes on, that even though some of us must stay indoors, <laughs> that we can do these fun things like Adobe Live. Brings a little bit of joy. Got people from New Zealand, got people from Tucson, Arizona, got people from Norway. Drink lots of coffee, Howard Pinsky. I'm already on it, bro. Right, I, I'm one step ahead of you. Got a fresh made thing of coffee here. Okay, we got people from Canada. All right, Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay, very, very cool. Everyone's coming from lots of different places. Get your coffee, get your drinks, get your things, do what you're gonna do, get in your sweatpants. Me personally, I have normal pants on, not sweatpants, but excited. Marco Russell says, never used XD. This is going to be the time for you, my friend, because we're going to spend the next two days building a community connectivity app, but more so like a like a like an online aggregator, right? Like if we are going to be social distancing, right? If we're going to do a little bit of isolation and stay indoors, you can only watch so much Netflix. That's all I'm saying. So why don't we create a native application, design a creative native application that uh, brings in all the fun things you might be able to do online. Watch movies, play games, chat in rooms, find stuff, talk to people. Let's bring it all together in one little place so you could just swipe through and then have everything you need right there because there's lots of stuff to do online, right? Uh, we got people from North Carolina. We got people from Sumaya is from San Jose, California. What's up, California? Okay, amazing stuff. Well, uh, why don't we just kick over it? Let's really quickly before we get too far into this thing because we got two hours together today Let's talk about the schedule. We just got done. Oh this side with Paul Tranny. He's doing the illustrator uh, Daily creative challenge right before that we had uh, Anna Davis course. She was doing some really awesome drawing and painting uh, We are currently up at the top right there. Uh, that's me Jesse Showalter doing the Adobe live for UI UX design and then coming up next Howard Pinsky so you got a full lineup of fun content Monday through Friday, all day long, here on Adobe Live. So that's super duper fun. Why don't we jump over to my desktop? I'll introduce myself just a little bit more. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jesse Showalter. I'm a full stack designer. You can find me and info about me here, jessieshowalter.com. I'm a full stack designer and a content creator. So I create things for the internet, like YouTube videos, online courses, memberships, mentoring, learning. Um, and uh, I like to design websites and applications specifically. I'd be one of those UI UX designers you may have heard of. Maybe you're like me, who out there, give me a little raised emoji hand. If you like UI and UX design stuff, let me know. Let's talk about it. Let's chat about what is going on and what you love about it. Uh, Marco Russell says, I'm happy to have found this because I can reintroduce myself to the Adobe suite again. Marco, that's a good call because we are going to be using Adobe XD a lot. We're also going to be jumping over doing a little Photoshop and Illustrator work because the suite, it all integrates together and it's so sweet. Okay, cool. Um, let me see. Somebody said, Paul Weaver says he's from England and in lockdown with a new drawing tablet and new enthusiasm to do art. Hey, your glass is half full, Paul. That's all I... <laughs> 
That's all I'm saying. All right, cool. Things are going good. Hey, talk to me in the chat. I love to talk to people in the chat. Okay, so got some little emoji hands, some waving hands. Allison says she loves some good UX and UI. So user experience design, user interface design, very near and dear to my heart. That is what I do. I work with cool brands and startups to do that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to learn even more, you can go to learn.jessyshowalter.com and do I have free downloads for you there and sign ups for courses that I'm releasing soon. And then here's my YouTube channel. I got over 100,000 subscribers. Um, I make videos on things about design and development and freelance business and front end web development and code and all sorts of cool stuff. So if you are, if you like watching a video or two, maybe check that one out because I got one or two there for you. Okay, so let's kick over. I think that's it. I think that's all we need to talk about, really. Um, things are going pretty good. Okay. Uh, Miney, I probably merged her name, Arahu says she's studying and developing a UI UX project right now. That's awesome, amazing. Now's a really, really good time to study, to grow your skill set, and Adobe Live's a really, really good way to do that. Again, people from Palm Springs, from Germany, everywhere, from Mumbai, India joining us. Man, oh, the time differences are real. Let me get a sip of this coffee real quick. Oh, that was good. I tried not to slurp into the microphone, but I gotta have coffee. Okay. If you don't have Adobe XD, okay, if you don't have it at all, you can go up to uh, in the little chat bar right there and you can download Adobe XD um, by simply click, like hovering over the little XD tab and clicking download now. That's where you can go to get it right above the chat. And there's information above the chat about what's going on in here that'll help you to download stuff there. And if you'd like to submit uh, your portfolio, because we're gonna be doing portfolio reviews in about an hour or so, you can click that link right there and uh, you it'll allow you to submit your link for your portfolio. Um, you also could consider becoming a part of our Discord, the Adobe XD Discord that has over 35,000 creatives inside of it. That will allow you to, uh, to chat, to participate in the Adobe Daily Creative Challenges or the, X, the XD focused ones, right? You can get uh, inspiration, encouragement, community. It's pretty important. We might, we might even be mentioning it inside of the community aggregator app that we're building because it's a place to find community, right? So that's a thing. You could also try to submit your portfolio there and portfolio reviews. Look at all these smiling faces of people submitting their portfolios. Don't you want to be there too? You do. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we can definitely, somebody will probably put a link to that as well. So uh, with all that being said, what is a community aggregator app? What are we doing? Um, well, the idea is, like I already said, since we're stuck inside, why don't we have some fun with it? Why don't we create a one-stop shop that has all of those places? And I'll tell you, I want to talk really quickly about inspiration um, because I want this app to do a few things. But the the thought for this application actually came, I'm not even kidding, from cruising around on Adobe stock, like uh, the Adobe stock image site. And I found a bunch of images by this submitter or uh, uh, illustrator or artist, whatever you want to say, who has submitted all these awesome images named Warat. And he just had all these fun, like three dimensional kind of fun, like, uh, like illustrations here. Let's zoom in so you can see them a little bit better. And I just thought, man, look at all the color. Like it just seemed like a ton of fun. And, and there was such good subject matter here. Like there's stuff about music and there's stuff about food and there's stuff about education. I was like, that would be perfect. That would be perfect to create a fun, interesting, colorful application and just, just explode the thing with color and be able to kind of move around in there. So, um, all right. Oh, and also somebody was saying that they've never used Adobe XD before. We're going to go through and talk about a bunch of the basics and we're going to go into advanced techniques. I'm going to tell you everything I do while I do it, but, uh, let's XD.com is a place that has been set up by Howard Pinsky, who's going to be on next actually. And so he's going to be kicking off the new Adobe Daily Creative Challenge for the next two weeks. You can join in on those challenges. It's going to be really, really fun. But before you get there, you could cheat and go to letsxd.com and you could have the edge because Howard will teach you all these amazing things about Adobe XD. I will probably be referencing this quite a bit because he's very smart. He's a very, very smart guy. 
It's got lots of good stuff there. I have Adobe XD open, as you can see down in my dock. I'm using an Apple computer. Use a PC, use an Apple computer, use whatever you want, right? And I'm gonna try to mention the key commands as much as I can for both. Um, okay, cool. So, and we have an artboard. Uh, out on our screen. If you want to draw a new artboard, what are artboards? Just really quickly, if you've never used Adobe XD. Adobe XD is an artboard kind of like system where we have this infinite canvas. I'm holding down space bar and just moving around with my mouse. We have lots and lots of stuff there. I can hold down uh, option and just drag a new version of my artboard out, or I can hit A and I could drag any size artboard that I want. Isn't that nice? I can also hit A and I can choose uh, if we just hit A again, I can choose a predefined size like uh, Apple devices, like Google devices, Microsoft websites, maybe a standard web size like that. And uh, that's, yeah, that's what we're doing. So we have lots of artboards and that way we are gonna be designing and not only that, but we're gonna be prototyping, okay? So Voodoo Val side note just posted a link to the XD Discord down in the chat there. So you're gonna wanna make sure you go there and sign up for that, be a part. Be a part of that community. It's a lot of fun. So those are artboards. Artboards are really fun. Um, what is XD also really phenomenal at? Doing basic design stuff. Like I can draw shapes like circles and rectangles and things. Ellipses, the designer might say, because I can't call it a circle. You got to call it an ellipse. You can draw fun stuff out there like that. And then you can also prototype and animate stuff. So I can head up here in the left top hand side, top left hand side, that's a better way to say that. And I can hit prototype and I can click on any element and just drag a friendly little handle, a friendly little handle out there. And I can say, why don't we auto animate and we'll auto animate back. And then when I press play, I can kind of tap and just see things auto animate back. These are just some of the basics of Adobe XD. Isn't that nice? It's really nice. So that's, we're gonna be doing some designing. We're gonna be doing some prototyping, some animating so that we can create this really fleshed out prototype. Marco Russell says, should we do this on tablet or computer? Is there a difference? You should do it on the computer because as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe XD is out on the tablet yet. I don't know if it'll ever come out of the tablet. I'm just, I wanted to sound cool. Like I had inside information. I don't, um, but do it on the computer. That'd be better. Okay. Uh, what else do we got? Another quick, like little, little 60 more seconds of the overview of XD along the left-hand side. You have all your tools. You got shapes, you know, squares and ellipses and polygons and lines. You have the pen tools so we can do some Bezier curves inside here, just like if we were hanging out with Paul Tranny in the earlier stream and doing some Illustrator stuff, we got the pen tool and, and Bezier curves here as well, okay? Uh, we also have nice text options. So we can draw some text out there, type in it, size it up and down. You got all the fun typography options over here. Lots of good stuff there. You got artboards and zoom. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, we're currently on the layers panel. So as I draw, elements out like different squares. You can see those rectangles showing up here in my layers panel, but I could also kick over to the components panel, which we will talk all about. The uh, XD gives you the ability to create reusable components. You can use over and over instead of having to redraw the button a million times, you just do it once. And then if you change it once, it changes everywhere. That's kind of like the big idea there. We also have lots of amazing plugins and integrations um, that uh, we can use here in Adobe XD, and we'll be covering a bunch of those as well. Uh, up top, we have the name of our project. Why don't we just press Command S right now, and I'm gonna save this locally, and I'm just gonna call this, uh, what do we call this? Uh, I don't know, aggregator for now. Let's just call it aggregator, and I'll save it onto my desktop. And uh, cool, and then when I draw elements onto my artboard where everybody getting the the nomenclature down on my artboard we start to have stuff in my inspector panel on the right hand side um, like the ability to align things just like in photoshop or illustrator or the rest of the creative suite you have all of the the different positions x y rotation good stuff like that we're going to talk about some responsive layout stuff let's zoom in so you can see this stuff some responsive layout options some appearance options like color and opacity and borders and then we have all sorts of other fun stuff so we're gonna be going that that's the basic tour now you know now you're here um what should we start doing well i think it's a good idea to just establish some uh, priorities for the project just really quickly not like a lot because we don't want to spend a lot of time typing we want to we want to get to the designing so but let's start let's start typing a little bit shouldn't we i think so let's just create 
I'm gonna hit my text right there, and I'm gonna come over into my inspector panel and make it a text area, so I can stretch out an area of text, and I can bring down the size of it, and just make my text black so it pops a little bit. And let's just put project re, whoa, my space button not working. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, all right. Well, that should be interesting. Maybe somebody can tell me out there why uh, my, oh, it was just the font I was using. That was weird. I was using a weird font that wasn't allowing me to, don't use whatever font that was. It was bad. It was bad, okay? Howard Pinsky, when we're talking about uh, tablet, Howard Pinsky says, you never know, Jesse. You never know. Mm. That sounds like a thing. Sounds like it might become a thing. That, how weird would that be to use Adobe XD on a tablet? Oh, that'd be mind-blowing. Okay. Let's just do Project Rex really quickly, shall we? Um, first, we want to uh, aggregate content, online content, right? Um, can we just do a little double right there? We're gonna do an indent like games, um, you know, uh, games, uh, shows, do, 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 do. Uh, how about uh, chat? And then we'll just do etc. Because there's lots of things we could do, right? Next up, what do we want to do? Um, we want to uh, see categories. Uh, so let's let's organize. Organize by category. Oh man, I can't spell. But if you didn't know, uh, Adobe XD has spell check, which saves my life. Look at that. Category, organized by category. That's something we're gonna want, I think. Why don't we just stretch this down? Um, and then let's not, again, let's not take too much time here. Let's just put a couple, a couple of requirements here. We wanna aggregate online content. We wanna organize it by category. We wanna see details. Um, and I think also we want the ability to save favorites. That's all I'm thinking. Let's just do that. That's all we need. Those are our project requirements, okay? So why don't we, just make this a little bit smaller and fun thing to do. Why don't we come down here and just double click on the very bottom handle and that just took our text box size all the way up to match the text. That was one of the new recent releases and updates inside of Adobe XD, okay? So, uh, let's see, ooh, Anthony says, oddly there was a tablet app called Adobe Proto that was specifically for Adobe tablet apps years ago. I never used Adobe Proto, but I would like to have tried. Um, as I'm designing, does anybody, let me know, if you have questions about process or how you get started in your, you know, your creative career or how to use the tool, you let me know. You just drop those in the chat. We will stop and chit chat as we go. So. I like to chit chat while I talk. Let's just go ahead and select our artboard here and let's name this uh, launch screen. Okay, can we just do that? Launch screen? Um, because I don't know about you, but I just like to, staring at a blank screen sometimes is terrifying when you just see white. So what I like to do is something just really fast and easy. I wanna get some color on the page. I wanna get something going that um, just allows me to see what it's gonna look like, right? And and then I, I get rid of that blank page and then I, don't, I don't have to worry about it anymore. No longer do I have a blank page, but instead I have something and it's just good for my morale, that's all. So I like to do a little launch screen right there. Why don't we open up, I have a little program called Icon Jar. Actually, let's close Icon Jar because I actually have something else, okay? Oh, uh, Amber Rodriguez says, Howard Pinsky made the switch to XD entire team is now on it whoa what did you switch from oh that's a good question what did you well i'm just glad you are on xd now because it's solid and i love that integration here's what i'm going to do i'm going to just slide over because i have x i have uh, illustrator open and i downloaded an icon pack okay so we have the icon pack and remember all of those fun illustrations that we were looking at i already downloaded a bunch of them so I have a bunch of those too. So maybe, maybe let's just do not a launch, but let's go onboarding, onboarding, and we'll call this, whoops, onboarding one. Usually I would go like into really strict like wireframe type stuff. Um, how used to be your UX process. What is my UX process? That's funny. I was just about to say that. So 
Usually I would go into like a really specific wireframing process, a discovery process, but since we only have two days and each of these days is kind of built on two hours at a time, um, we're fast forwarding this UX and UI process. I would do a large competitive set. I would do a lot of user research. Um, I would do heavy amounts of, uh, uh, of mood boarding and visual research. And then I would probably go into a wireframing phase. Wireframing is where you're literally just putting gray boxes on you know, on the, on the white artboards and doing that whole thing. I would do that. And the reason is because UI and UX design can kind of be summed up as product design. And this cycle that product design is in is like, you want to, des you want to research, design a prototype, test the prototype. And if it doesn't work, you didn't spend a lot of time fleshing out all these like really fully formed ideas and high resolution mockups. You could just take that real scrappy kind of like UX prototype and then go back to the drawing board and fix it and keep testing it until it works good. So, oh, that's so, to, to Yoshi Babalola, so, sorry if I messed up your name, but asked, what's the best learning path for a newbie who needs to design an app? Well, I think that you're in a good place, right? You're gonna follow along and you're gonna build a multi-screen application right now. So I would say follow along, ask lots of questions. That's the best learning path, is lots of question asking, lots of doing, lots of trying. That's why Adobe Live is so legit, because it actually encourages you to do. And if I was, if I was you, I would stick around for Howard Pinsky's uh, Daily Creative Challenge, because then you're gonna get challenged and actually have homework you can finish and submit. So that's, that's what I would say. I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of learning, but I'm a bigger fan of doing, because doing is better learning in my opinion. That's just my opinion. So. Let's do onboarding. And I'm gonna do something really quick. I'm gonna go to uh, window, no, excuse me, view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna, actually, I'm just gonna press Command Shift L. That's gonna bring up my CC libraries. If you have Adobe CC installed, you can also open up the, let's just bring this over here, the actual CC libraries thing, right? So you have like all your applications and you can like update stuff. But if you click over to the Your Work tab, right? We have all the libraries that we've created. I downloaded all of those awesome illustrations and I put them in a, um, inside of a library called stay in. That's right. That's what we wanted to call our application stay in because it encourages you to stay inside. And I have all of these awesome, um, all of these awesome images, right? So I can access those there and then I can open up my libraries inside of here. Let's just really quick libraries, open CC libraries. That is over there in file, open CC libraries. See that? So it opens right up. I can see everything or I can just go to that stay in library and there's all of my beautiful illustrations. Aren't they gorgeous? It's amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna answer a few more questions in a little bit, but first I wanna get one of these amazing pieces of artwork out here. I'm just gonna drag it onto the screen. I'm gonna hide my library and I'm gonna zoom out by pressing Command or Control minus and plus. That'll allow you to zoom in and out. And I'm gonna bring my image in like this. I just wanna bring it in here. That's pretty cool. Now, a cool thing you can also do is uh, if we want our artboard to match the uh, the color of our image, you have a few options. You could grab the entire artboard and give it a fill color, or you could draw a rectangle, which is actually the route I'm gonna take. This is just like Photoshop and anything else in life. There's multiple ways to do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my rectangle. I'm gonna use my eyedropper and I'm gonna grab a little bit of that color, just like that, okay? now. There is some, uh, a little bit of gradient in here and that's okay. We can fix that. We can totally, totally fix that. But just for now, I wanna put something like that in. Now here's, here's what we could do. Check this out. I can open my uh, CC library back up and find that image that I really, really like. And then I can open it just by double clicking and it's gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop for me most likely. Yep, because that's where the image was made. So while it's opening up, let's answer some questions. Um, Ayush says, what is the process to be good in creative graphic design and web and mobile design? What's the process to be good at creative graphic design? I think honestly, it is um, just exploring a lot, trying a lot of stuff and trying things that are outside of your comfort zone. That's one thing that is hard for a lot of people is to try things that are outside of your comfort zone. People tend to do the same thing over and over and over. We're all guilty of it. But uh, I, I just think like the ability to do lots of different things is, it's, it's just a really good idea. 
So do lots of different things. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm now in Photoshop. This is not supposed to be a Photoshop tutorial, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about what, what I'm thinking about doing here. Um, I am going to just unlock my image and I'm going to, yeah, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna put a mask on top of it and then take my gradient tool and just gradiate up like this away. Just something like that, okay? And then I will just, uh, I could just apply that layer mask if I want to. What I could also done was create a layer mask, hit brush, open this up. We're just doing a little bit of art direction stuff. My opacity is set low on my brush. I have it set to black now. So I can just start erasing some of this surrounding stuff around it. And then I won't get that gradient. And then we'll save a new version of this guy. It'll be really, really nice. And we'll just plug it right into our thing. And we'll probably save it as a PNG, right? So that we get, we get all of that transparency that we need. So let's just do that real quick. We'll just save a version of this out and press Command Option Shift S or Control Option Shift S for you on the PC. Um, cool, cool, cool. So we are gonna save that out and we're gonna answer more questions while that happens. Very cool, okay. Um, yeah, many thanks. Toy Toyosi says, just signed up for the challenge, by the way. Nice try on pronouncing my name. <laughs> I am, I'm really sorry and bad at names. I apologize. So let's save this down as a smaller size. We don't need it to be so massive. We're just changing the size there. And we're gonna save it just right into the desktop. Let's do that. And then I'll show you a really cool trick inside of Adobe XD. Here we are back inside of XD. Let's hide Photoshop. And let's bring that over. I'm just gonna grab um, my image. And actually what I'll do is I'm gonna get rid of the original image. I'm gonna draw a rectangle like this. And then I'm just gonna drag my image into the rectangle and bang, it fills the image just like that. And now we can just space it out and it has smart kind of controls. Now let's take the border off of it and it just fades a little bit better, doesn't it? It looks like it's so cute just sitting there like that. I love it. Let's just get it off screen a little tiny bit. And that's kind of the idea. That's kind of what we're going for, okay? Is we would do some onboarding like that and we would do a couple of them and we might we might do them just really, really quickly. Like do them really, really fast. So uh, let's see, let's see. Lots of good stuff in the chat. Everybody doing good? Everybody hanging out? All right, question for the chat, Howard asks, with online collaboration now more important than ever, what additional features would you like to see in XD? It'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, just let, let us, let, in the chat there, just tell us what kind of features you wanna see, because I really like XD, and I think it's going in a good direction. Let's see if we can not get my computer to speed up and work a little bit for me here. Okay, I'm gonna close, I got a lot of things open, so let's close some stuff. I don't need that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't even need Illustrator open right now, and I don't need that open right now. So let's go back over to XD. Things are working a little snappier. Hopefully, we'll see. Maybe my computer just is not doing well right now. And that would be really, really bad. Animation control, like timeline control would change the game, says C King. Um, that would be pretty cool. Although you gotta admit the simplicity of, of just like auto animating stuff, it's really, really nice, isn't it? Like, I, I really like it. Um, for instance, um, we, we, let's, let's just demonstrate a little bit of that here in a second, okay? Let's get, we'll get back to this onboarding, but you see where I'm going, right? We're gonna do a, a couple of these and I might just do really ugly versions of them for now. Um, let's grab our thing again. Let's bring a purple one in there. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's not the right one. Let's bring something like that in and then let's bring something like the blue one in there, okay. I kind of like them big though. Isn't that nice? That's kind of nice actually. Maybe I just changed my mind on how I want to display these. Boy, maybe. Let's just, we're masking things right now or it's basically masked inside of our artboard. So I like something like that actually. Okay, yep, I just changed my mind. We're doing the whole thing. We're going for it. Let's, let's go large like this. Before we go any further, I'm gonna answer lots of questions and I am going to save my project 
and I'm going to figure out why my computer is going so slow. So folks, talk to me, talk to me. I'm gonna do a quick restart on my laptop. Technical difficulties happen. It says, I th Marianne's, or Mayani says, I think the worst in XD right now is that we can't control the components and repeat the grid at the same time. The repeat grid doesn't answer uh, to the components updates. It's true. As long as you update the master component within the repeat grid, it should work fine. It's true. There is some, there there probably is some things that the team could do with that, but I, I, I think there's a lot of needs that are happening there. In like repeat grid just saves lives. Components save lives. Uh, a little, like some of the seamless kind of interaction between those two. That could be nice. I could see them. Uh, Florence, do not worry about joining in late. Uh, my computer just froze, so I'm restarting my laptop right now and I'm drinking coffee and talking to the chat. Mm hmm. So everything's going to be all right. You didn't miss too much. We just started designing a content kind of like aggregation application. So we can uh, call it, oh, that's why we're calling it stay in. Mm, stay in. I like that. Um, cool. Yeah. Animation could be cool. Like some stuff with repeat grid and components could be cool. My laptop just restarted. So that's pretty cool. And it is, uh, times, times just, we've, we've been doing this for about half an hour. So we are making progress. Not as much as I'd like to at this point though. We got to get on our game and get my, my laptop running good. Um, while we're here, why don't we just go back down? Timelines are cool. Um, Allison says it's simple, but I'd love the use of an eyedropper tool the same way I do an illustrator by just grabbing a color and dropping it into multiple things. You know what I would say, Allison, to that? I think that's a good idea, but I also really love, I, I think that if you start using the component panel, um, that would save your life quite a bit because you can, you can grab multiple things and use the components for that. So let's switch back over to my desktop because we have relaunched and let's open aggregator back up. Here we go. Stay in is what we were calling, wasn't it? And things are running a little bit smoother. Good stuff. So we're just gonna go like that, open our libraries back up, jump back over to stay in, find that nice pink picture that we had there, close our libraries. Now let's start re-art directing this stuff. Let's see, I like it right there. That looked kind of cool. And then I really like this jukebox. This jukebox is so rad. Okay, let's do some text. Let's do some typography on this bad boy. I think I'm gonna pull this over this way instead. Books, I like the books. The books are simple. And movies and music. Okay, so let's bring some text in here. I'm gonna hit T for text and I'm just gonna click right on the screen and that allows me to start typing. Okay, so let's put um, uh, find a course to take. Boop, boop, boop. And let's left align our text by hitting right there in our inspector panel. That'll do that. And let's bring up the size of this and let's find it's set on Poppins. Let's, I mean, let's just stick with there for now. Let's go rough today and then we might come back and then fix things a little bit like, you know, tomorrow and just maybe like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. online. Let's do this online courses, nice and big and chunky text like that. I like that a lot. And then we're gonna do a little typography hack where we're gonna build a little typographic rhythm. So let's see if this works. We usually should go the other way, but let's go 39 divided by two. See how I'm just typing the math right there into my actual inspector panel. And then when I do that, I get 19.8. It did the math for me and it dropped my text down. So we let's stick medium here because we don't wanna go too light. And we go from medium semi bold to bold, nice and chunky and bold there. Now what we can do is uh, I'm actually gonna lock this background so I can work on top of it without grabbing it. And we can up and down, like size up and down both of the pieces of text and they stay in scale, which is really, really nice. Just like that, okay? Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see, uh, Anthony Profeta says coffee mix tip, three parts, eight o'clock Colombian plus one part Cafe Bustelo. That's what I'm drinking, Cafe Bustelo. And it tastes good. It tastes all right, all right. 
Okay, so let's do online courses there. Let's just take that and we'll just duplicate that over this way. And we'll duplicate that over this way, okay? Let's take our image again and just shrink it down. I really want that jukebox in there like that. And then I'm gonna try to get away, do a little, do a little bit of a hack here by getting, I think that one will actually work out. Let's draw a rectangle there. I'm going to press Command or Control bracket left to bring in my layers panel this uh, rectangle that we made all the way down, just like that. So let's see if we can do the same thing here, the rectangle, and just paste it in there. That bring our image above it. Let's bring our text above that. And we're doing all of this so that we can just art direct these images a little teeny tiny bit. Okay, now we'll take our rectangle. And, oh, there we go. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, cool. So we have online courses. We have streaming shows. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay, and then this one can be music. Yeah, music, streaming. Let's just do even simpler. Courses. Oh, I like this a lot. I like where this is going because now I can grab all of my text and size it all up. See that? Oh, that felt really nice. Let's bring it back like that and like that and like that. I'm going to do a little Howard Pinsky thing right now. Beep boop. I should do a little sounds. Okay, onboarding one. Let's rename our layers and keep everything organized here. Rename your layers, kids. It's very important to do. I'm just doing that by double clicking them in the layers panel and that allows me to rename them. Okay, and then for our onboarding, we can do something really, really simple. Like we're gonna hit uh, E for lips. Let's do a really simple uh, pagination kind of thing. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna do circles, I'm gonna do rectangles like this, take the border off of it, and then I'm gonna zoom way in, and you see these little dots right here? These will allow me to round the edges like that, okay? So I'm gonna round the edges like so, and I'm just gonna make sure that that is center aligned. I'm gonna drag another version out, and drag another version out. Now, let's let's talk a little bit about XD and the benefits. I could, I could have done that, or, I could have pressed Command or Control R and done a repeat grid, and now I'm just repeating out multiple versions of this, okay? What's great about that is as I edit one, I edit them all, which is really, really nice, okay? Um, okay, cool, so we just kind of center that. And then uh, we could have also changed the spacing here, which we do want to do, center the whole thing. And then what I'm going to do is ungroup the grid because uh, I want these two to be just a, just a little bit subdued, okay? And I know I'm being really nitpicky, but I want this just to be a little thinner, just little chiclets kind of things. And I'm gonna group them together up here and call it pagination. Let's take that over here. Let's take our image, just like that. Let's take our rectangle and just drag it all the way down to the ground. And then our image can come up like this just a little bit, okay? And now our pagination is there and our pagination is there. And then the only thing we're gonna do is what opacity do we have it at? 60? We're gonna take our other one down to 60 and this one up to 100. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. This one up to 100 and this one down to 60, just like that. <laughs> Okay, now we're paginating in between courses, online courses to help you grow in every area. Boom, boom, boom. Let's change this to area text and pop that in there like that. Okay, why don't we get rid of these because I like our area text better. And we'll say streaming uh, shows, movies, and everything else you love to watch, okay? And this one says, stream your favorite songs and podcasts. Boom, boom, just like that. 
Okay, we have a lot of space. Let's just talk about spacing really quick. I got a lot of empty space up here and I'm not really using it. So why not just bring the text up a little bit, okay? And let's talk about contrast because some of these have better contrast than others. So we could add a slight shadow on here, not a really dark one, take the blur off and take the opacity down. But now when I zoom in, you can see the difference, right? Watch this. So you can see the difference between shadow and no shadow. We want contrast. We want things to be able to see what we're actually looking at here. I don't usually suggest lots of shadow um, to create contrast. I would, I would much rather uh, rework the colors, right? So that the colors pop a little bit more and they're legible no matter where you're at. But we might come back and fix that a little bit later. But that's just something to get us started for now. And let's get on to the meat of it, okay? Um, okay, cool. Uh, lots of things happening in the chat. Howard Pinsky's answering lots of questions, like Voodoo Val's answering lots of questions. Um, but uh, yeah, so very, very cool. Everything's going all right. Everybody having fun so far? What's your, so far, what has been um, something you've enjoyed? Like what's an online resource that you've enjoyed that you like hadn't really spent a lot of time doing? Um, like maybe it's this, maybe it's Adobe Live, maybe it's something else. Um, yeah, Voodoo Val says the shadow looks a little bit better against the peach color. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is anybody, who's, anybody loving these illustrations too? Because I just love these illustrations. I can't get enough of them. Okay. Well, we're going to come back and prototype this. And it's going to be super duper rad. But I want to get into, um, I want to get into like the home screen. If we can do anything, I want to get into the home screen. So why don't we, I'm going to drag this over and delete everything off of here. And I'm thinking now these colors are super great but I'm gonna create our home here. What I want is I want the app to be really, really clean, really white, really bright, and then I want the colors of all these images to be the thing that really pops and stands out. So it's gonna be a fairly clean white light application letting the images do the work. Chen says, I'm afraid that number one's picture background color would be too light. I can't really see the words there. You know what, you're right. You're super duper right about it. Uh, which brings me to a feature. Uh, I want um, not just, oh look, we have some blending styles there. So maybe we could try this really quickly for Chen and see if this works. Let's, boom. I would like some color controls on images, just like in Photoshop. I'd like to be able to change hue and saturation and luminance. I think that would be a super duper fun thing. So let's take our rectangle what would be a better, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna find this color, okay? Let's take the border off and let's fill this with peach. Now, what gives us, let's zoom in and get, let's talk about contrast since Chen was asking, okay? Something that would be a little bit more contrasty would be something like this, but it's just such an ugly color. But what we can do is set it to that color, bring our image back in there and then mess with our uh, our different layer styles, okay? And that's not working. You know what else we could do? Is we could also bring up our, a better thing to do might be just, just to bring up our images and pick a better image. I was gonna say maybe that would work, but I don't think it's gonna work. So let, oh, I found it, Chen, we fixed it. Boom, look at that. Ask and you shall receive, because that is much better much better now that i'm now that i'm looking at it i feel like we need better stuff all over the place like i don't know if this is music let's bring this in why not like music that's thumping in the car I mean, that could be that could be a thing instead of music we can make this games <laughs> yes your favorite online video games boom just like that i like that a lot you know what sometimes you just need you need it to be something that it's it's not able to be. So you just gotta fix things. You just gotta make them your own. You just gotta take take it into your own hands. Seize the day, so to speak, and fill it with the correct color and bingo. I feel like that's a lot better. And I wanna just say thank you, Chen, for challenging me in that moment to fix what was there. Cause it wasn't right. It wasn't right, was it? It wasn't at all, it really wasn't. So let's just, I don't want to keep messing with these so much, but I like that a lot better. Let's bring this down as well. Boop, 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 boop. I like this little car. This car is a lot of fun. Uh, let's
let's bring our that down right there and choose the blue and let's grab our image and just bump it up a little bit fun 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 just hiding our line there so you can't even see it okay so we got courses streaming and games so that's better Alberto says digging it Chen man you saved the day you made it happen I wasn't it, it wasn't happening for me I was ruining it okay so let's get back to this home screen shall we I want to talk about the home screen I'm gonna go like this let's let's just start out with a little menu because this is what I'm thinking again I think it's gonna be a very minimal app I'm gonna choose black and white for the majority of the application. It's not gonna be pure black though. It's gonna be an off black. You never wanna go pure black. You wanna always do slightly off black. That's just my opinion. Some people do pure black and they get away with it. Not me though. Whenever I do it, it just looks too harsh. So uh, we're just gonna do a little menu icon right there. And let's zoom in, because I think also we could just squeeze this little guy down. Let's make this a little bit smaller. You could also definitely just make your own, or instead of making your own icons, you could just grab icons from places. That is also a thing. So I'm gonna grab these, I'm gonna group these. I'm just gonna call this menu icon. There is, uh, let, uh, there's a really great question to ask in the chat. Uh, Main says, is there some kind of UX accessibility guide? Uh, there is, when you're talking about accessibility, you're most likely talking about, uh, are things legible? Do they pass like, the sniff test so to speak like so can uh for deaf and blind and color and you know people who are using screen readers all those kinds of things yes there is we'll talk about some plugin stuff later that would help you with that for sure so we have there's our little tiny menu guy it's just a little guy just put him right there and why don't we do this i'm gonna take e or excuse me yeah e for ellipse i'm gonna draw one out and i'm gonna drag this over to the side now if you hover over the top corner, top or left edge of an artboard, you'll get some little like bars that show up. And these are going to allow you to draw your smart guides if you want. You can do smart guides, which are always really fun. Or with the artboard selected, you can come over into your inspector panel here and choose grid. Turn it on and you can either choose a grid that's either a layout or you can choose a square grid like that. So uh, and then the square size will actually allow you to dictate how small you want to go here. I'll, I'll stick with an eight point grid. I think that that'll work out all right. We're going to balance our items. And why would you want to use a grid over a layout? It's kind of preference. I prefer the grid because it allows me to get really nitty gritty. It allows me to do things with typography, modular scale, vertical rhythm, which I'll explain more as we get going, but allows me to balance things nicely um, and not be constrained to just these like columns that are running down the page. Some people prefer columns and I'm all about it if you prefer columns. I say you do you, but me, I like, I like the grid, okay? So just personal preference, but I will say that the answer for both of those is, is why would you want any of these things at all? Uh, because it allows you to be really, really consistent. Like for instance, when I zoom in, you can see my icon is three grids, right? 24 pixels, three grid squares over from the side. We can do this. We can just make sure that this one is three grids over. Now you could have just used those smart guides and just drug them right there, which I actually will still do. Boom. Drag them like that. Okay. All right. So now we have those lined up. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the border off this bad boy. Let's just fill it so you can see what we're working with. And I'm going to explore the plugin menu. I have a really a favorite plugin of mine. So I click on the little Lego block plugin icon there and I'm going to go to here is it UI faces. It's a great little plugin that allows me just to hit a some options that I have there and I'm going to go ahead and apply a different avatar or a face inside of my thing. And you can keep applying, you can try it lots of times. You can kind of dig down and find one that works more for you or you know something that you prefer more. But really when you're prototyping and creating stuff, I usually just grab one and move on. So now we have a little face in there. There is our our little UI face, okay? So back over to our layers. We're just gonna click that. We're gonna call it avatar. And we have our menu just like that. And uh, we can see uh, our, our hotkey for guides, hide all guides, command, uh, 
uh, semicolon right there to like hide your smart guides and smart grids and then uh, command or control apostrophe um, excuse me not apostrophe quotation right that'll allow you to turn off the grids and so you can look at it with it on and with it off so I just learned those hotkeys just make sure you keep those um, the voodoo valse of the game images reminds her of Fortnite. that's true looks pretty awesome okay um, all right all right let's keep cruising things are going pretty good we got about uh, let's see 40 minutes until we do portfolio reviews so make sure you are submitting your links over in the portfolio review tab that way we can uh, uh, investigate and give you some feedback and critique constructive critique on your portfolio so why don't we do this let's take our typography over here I'm gonna turn everything off so I can see it nice and clean and why don't we just paste those things in here? We're going to take the shadows off of them and we're going to use that same off black color like that. OK, so this is a massive headline. We don't need that. Let's use just this simple headline and say, hey, uh, what's this person's name? Um, how about, uh, hey, Chen, because Chen's in the chat. So her name gets to be put inside the application. Hey, Chen, there, there's your name. There you are. Uh, all right, so we'll put hey Chen and then we'll just put a little apostrophe there and then we might actually take this and just bump it up to the semi bold and again, I'm gonna do a little typography hack right where I just go into the size of my typography I'm gonna divide it by two and you get 13 and that might be a little small So let's bump it up to 14 and then we're gonna drop not one but two weights so semi bold medium Regular light would be actually three. So we're just gonna put that right there and let's put, uh, find something that interests you. Okay, so we'll put it like that. And then let's choose just for a little bit more contrast in the typography. Why don't we choose like a lighter color, something like that. It's all coming together. And again, we bring up our, our grids. We can see everything's on the grid. Bring up our, our uh, actual layout. We can see everything's working there as well. Um, let me see, Michelle says, maybe using columns with website design makes more sense than using them with mobile apps. Again, I mean, I know some people who design websites using gridded layouts like this. I know some people who design mobile apps using columned and rowed layouts. It really just depends on your workflow, what you prefer, what makes sense to you. There's some general guidelines about how to use columns and you know, 12 column, six column, one column layouts and stuff like that. When you get into web design, especially when you're thinking about responsive design, it makes a lot of sense to, I, I think the columns make sense because you tend to think in layouts in columns. So I know some people use both, super crazy. So I say do what makes most sense to you, okay? So I, I think we have our lockup for our text here. That's looking pretty good. And then I say we, this, there's, most likely a lot of content on this thing, right? We want people to be able to find content that they like and then uh, like kind of filter through it. So I'm gonna create a search box where I'm gonna get rid of, I think the border. I'm just gonna go like a really light gray, something really chill. Alberto Silva says 12 column grid for life. That's what I'm talking about. Not because I'm necessarily like on the 12 column grid kind of like team, but just because, hey man, you do you. You do what you love. You stick with that thing. Okay, let's zoom in and just put something like uh, search for anything. Let's do that, search for anything. Let's just bump up this text. And I feel like we could probably lighten this text. Um, and let's just bring up, not my contacts, no, no, no. Let's bring up icon jar. That would be a little bit better, wouldn't it? Uh, let's go. I think we have a magnifying glass around here somewhere. So icon jar is just a little third party application that stores a lot of the icons that I use pretty regularly and I can just open it up and drag one in. It's a nice part of my workflow. I like it a lot. So we're just going to put something like that right there. That looks pretty good. And I feel like actually I could just darken that guy up and this is about 11. Let's make it a 12 and just line everything up everything's looking all right i'm gonna group it together call this search bar okay and i'm gonna group these things together i'm gonna call this hmm uh intro text okay all right and then i'm gonna group this together i might as well i'm gonna call this nav right top nav something like that okay all righty 
Things are looking pretty good. And this is where it finally starts to get a little bit interesting. So why don't we take our text? We're gonna duplicate it. I just copied and pasted it, Command or Control C, Command or Control V, and then I drug a new copy of that down. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. We're gonna make a subheadline here. We're gonna cheat. We're not gonna do it with perfect math. We're just gonna cheat. So why don't we do something like categories, okay? And we are going to bring all that color. And whenever you do something like this, you should probably always have um, Command C, Command V to bring my other text down. Right align it. Just a C all, right? That's a pretty common pattern in UI design is we're about to create a bunch of different categories. Let them see all, like just list them all out if the user needs to. This could be not necessarily see all. It could also be something like uh, switching views. Like we're gonna do probably like a grid here of different elements and we could switch it to like list view or something like that. So that could be pretty fun. Michelle says, thanks, you are so welcome. All right, um, so why don't we do, let's, let's just start with what we got over here, right? Let's take our, our first image and should we do some masking um, or should we do, I think we should do some masking. I have a really fun idea. Let's do, check this out. I'm gonna draw a rectangle, okay? And I'm just gonna fill it with like a random color for now. And I'm gonna get my border off of there. And let's just put it about 25 pixels away from our little categories typography there. And I'm just gonna drag another one over here. I'm gonna play with spacing here real quick, okay? So I just want, here's, I'm gonna do repeat grid. Okay, and I'm gonna bring that over and just play with the sizing here and something like that, okay? So now I like to ungroup the grid. Let's get rid of this one and let's bring a second copy of it over. I'm just doing some sizing work. So now you can see I'm 10 pixels in between. If I hold down Option, and then I, I can kind of navigate around and put my mouse over other elements in my design. And you can see where I'm at, like how, what's the distance between things, okay? So I'm about 10 pixels away. That's a nice gutter, I like that. So let's work on that and then we'll bring our repeat grid back in in a second. I'm just doing a little bit of sizing work, okay? So I'm gonna bring, I'm just gonna round the corners and I have a little surprise for you guys because I'm gonna take this and just bring my color in like that. And we have this backpack scene with all of like the fun tools and everything like that. Pretty cool. Um, I actually went through and I removed a bunch of backgrounds, okay? Um, and just did a little bit of background removal work. So let's see if we can't, I wanna view these like this. Where is my background? There, there is my backpack and my stuff. So I'm gonna bring it in, it's still pretty large. I don't know, I was thinking about maybe a little three-dimensionality, like hanging things off the page just a little bit like that, right? So, I mean, the other option is to just bring, you know, my, my image, I'm gonna get my thing out of the way here, and just drop it right in. You could totally do that. You could totally do that. And if you don't know, there's also some other ways to do this, right? We could just go, um, let's talk about some basics of bringing images in and putting them inside of shapes, okay? So the first one you have was, I just drug the image right in, dropped it in there, and it immediately masks it into it. And it becomes kind of a smart object. So as I, as I mess with or manipulate the size of my shape, XD is gonna go ahead and, and in a very smart way, adjust the size of the image inside. That may not be what you want. You may want a little bit more fine grain control. You could just drag any image in and have your image like so. And I'm just gonna make a copy of this shape so we can see. You can also take your image and put it around another shape and then press Command or Control M and create Command or Control Shift M, excuse me, to mask. And this will allow you to actually mask the image inside. So we can see that it's actually stuck inside this mask and it's actually like peeking through. That's like the idea of a mask, right? So if I bring this up and over, even though it's up and over, you can see the edge of my mask right there. And now this would be a really easy way to bring it right on top. And I could just start manipulating 
like the size of all of these elements. And you can then you can get really, really specific, right? Now we don't have to worry about it adjusting that way. We can kind of control the whole thing together. I'm gonna to group both of those together and we have a little bit more fine grain control on where this goes. That's another way of doing it. Those are cool. I'm gonna skip both of those and I'm just gonna do a shape and I have these awesome little cutouts that I'm just gonna pop up like this and hang off to the side because I think it's a lot more fun. <laughs> I think it's a lot more fun. So let's get down here and put something like that right there. We're just playing with position right now. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do a few things side by side until I figure out what I want, okay? So it might be like this, it might not, I don't know. We, we might play with this three dimensionality thing and then just get really sick of it after a little bit. But I, I just like a little bit of dimensionality that pops out there. So let's take our text um, and let's put something like this. Like these are courses, right? So let's put courses. Again, we wanna go white and we want to something like that so we're just making space right now we're just having fun with it let's do courses and then let's do some subtext underneath that says like mm, 17 courses okay or let's do even more let's say we've gathered a lot we're aggregating lots of courses from around the web for you to enjoy in your own home courses you have 21 courses let's make this a little bit bigger so just have some nice contrast between the two. Something like that. And we just group that whole thing together. See, I really like that. It says, uh, Michelle says, would be cool if you could animate the 3D shapes. That would be cool. Here's what I like about this idea, okay? I'm actually gonna get rid of it because I think I'm just, are we all decided? I think we are, right? That we all just like, I just like this. If you don't like this, that's okay. Uh, that's totally your prerogative to not like it. But I really like it, so we're gonna stick with it. The only tricky thing you gotta worry about when you have little items like this hanging over then becomes your spacing, right? So we have to be really, really picky now about hanging things over the edge. So something like that, right? Because we don't want it to start to drift into the other, um, yeah, into the other, uh, block that we have here. So we want to just have like be really intentional have a lot of control over it So that's cool. Um, what else did we have? We had uh, games right, so let's do 145 Games, okay, and let's see if we can find the games one. Do we have something about games here anywhere? I know we did uh, That's projects Ooh. Oh, that's a fun games one. Let's do that one. Bring that guy in there. And I'm guessing, I like this purple color though. So we might not use the recommended color off that and use like this purple color, something a little bit more bold instead. So here's games, courses. I feel like this is starting to come together. Here we go, here we go. Uh, I feel like the overlap from the dimensional one is creating some tension points, especially since there are so many small elements. You know what? You might be right. You might be totally right, but I feel like we should try it. it we can. Here's the cool thing. You can try something, and if you don't like it, you can always look at a really easy solution. Just grab our images, pop them in the lower right-hand corner like this. Can't we always do that? Totally. And you might be right. This might be really clean. So I tell you what, I want to. I, I like your style. I like what you're talking about, Haley. I like where you're going with it. Um, let's roll with it. Let's do it like this. Uh, and, and let's see how it goes. Because I'm digging it. Um, so, okay. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to grab these right here. Now, we could repeat grid this. Totally, totally. Right? Let's see if we can get some repeat grid action going on. So, I'm going to grab this one and just move it off to the side as an extra. I'm going to press Command or Control R. I'm going to repeat. Pre repeat grid this thing, move it into position, and then boom, there's all my courses. And I can cut out this edge, we don't need that. Here's all of my, not courses, but all my all my different things here. So let's, oh, 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 let's 
grab the rectangle can we fill it a different color we can't can we mm, see that's why that's why I think I like those comments earlier I'm just gonna stick with it like this that's fine that's fine with me because I'm not comfortable doing that yet yeah I just zoomed way in sorry let's get back here mm, 10 so we have 10 I'm just measuring everything up and making sure everything is cool so let's just fill it with some different and fun colors something like that these are all working and just to throw some things in let's just start grabbing some of our fun cutouts games ba -ba. what is this one oh, it's like continents and stuff this is fun stuff Ooh, workouts let's make that one workouts workouts let's do 53 workouts okay <laughs> Mohammed says he liked the previous one with the 3ds and like all the things hey but you know what I agreed it could have been a little bit tense it's not right it's not totally true let's do uh, uh ba -ba 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 -ba. what could this one represent a little suit and tie and money um, um, business uh, uh online business something like that uh, oh jobs there you go remote jobs that's something you can do from home hunt for a new job 145 jobs 53 workouts 145 games that's a lot of games let's do 75 games 21 courses okay and on and on we go with these now I I don't know about you guys this is my workflow this is what I like to do I like to get going with something and then I like to stop and just challenge myself and ask myself is this the right is this the right thing for me to be doing right now okay and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here I'm gonna grab some more of these fun colors what other colors do we have we have this nice orange color in here let's do that one right boom, boom. Just get a little bit further here and I'll tell you exactly what I mean by my last comment let's that's a nice deep dark purple let's do that one mm-hmm here's our pink again let's do that nice peach color in there see if we can get that working and uh, here is like another orangish kind of color that's fine we can have maybe we'll just explore here and figure out if we can pick a different color maybe like this teal color mmm I like that pinkish color too lots of fun colors to work with okay so we got a bunch of different uh, categories in here courses games remote jobs workout now I like to start exploring this is pure experimentation we're talking visual design experimentation um, so let's and uh, Aziz has a really great question I'm gonna answer in a second about what comes after Adobe XD what's the next step but let's just talk about versions here so I think like it's fun to explore different versions and see which one hits like maybe this let's try masonry view okay let's try that um, so if you don't know what a masonry view is it's just some of them are a little bit longer than others and it causes for some fun some fun kind of positional changes so it doesn't have to be so perfectly gridded out right we're gonna keep 10 maybe we'll yeah we'll keep 10 pixels in between vertically but some of them are just a lot longer like that cool stuff and then let's do sorry let's bring this one in remote jobs boom do, 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 just like that and just stretch this one out a little bit bring that down so now we're doing a little bit more of like that fun Mason reviews like view style which is very cool oh my zoom in zoom outs are insane today okay that one's kind of a normal one and let's do games over here this can be kind of a normal one and then this could be a longer one again boom, boom, something like that and then we just see the very tip tops of this 
So this is just a, like a little bit more of a dynamic, interesting kind of like layout. So I like that. Um, we, we could try that. So let's try another, a different variation here in a second. Um, but let's answer Aziz's question. Aziz asked, uh, I've always had this question, which is what's the next step in Adobe XD after designing the prototype? Programming. Well, that would be, that's really whether or not you want to move into the field of programming or development. Um, so if you want to take these elements out of Adobe XD, we're going to talk about ways to share these elements, share your design so that uh, development teams, engineering teams can look at them, get all like all the information they need out of them, export all the assets and start building them in something like Android Studio or Xcode, depending on whether or not you want to build an Android uh uh, application or an iOS application. If it is a website instead of uh, like a native application, you'd want to move into front end and back end web development. So front end being like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe some of the fun JavaScript frameworks like React or Vue.js, something like that. And then if it is uh, back end development, you might be learning Python or Ruby on Rails or different language like that. But the next step is like legit like application development or web development. And that's a separate skill set from design. But if you want to be a designer or excuse me, want to be a developer design, some design skills are a great thing to have. Okay. So, uh, also if you, there are some pretty fun, uh, different like builders out there. If you want to create websites and don't want to learn how to code, there's a huge no code movement going on or minimal code. That's what I mean. Okay, so that's a that's a version we might explore, like the masonry view. Uh, why don't we just for funsies? Why don't we try a single column layout? See how I'm all like I even I like speak about things in columns. Um, this might actually be when you have single column. This might actually be where you get to explore some more. Um, of like that three dimensionality stuff because we have less of those tension points which were mentioned earlier, right? So that might be a cool thing where we can have a lot of fun three dimensionally with stuff. Like let's bring our games one in here and just make sure we're getting the same sizing. Boom, boom, boom. Something like that. Okay. And bring the, woo. Bring that whole group down, okay? And make it look the same. So now we're talking single column layout with our fun three-dimensional pieces that kind of pop off the page a little bit. That could be super duper fun. I actually, I tell you, I think I'm digging the three-dimensional like single column one. I think I am because it just, it's what I wanted. It's what I envisioned in my mind was like the playfulness and the fun of these things. Wow. Yeah, I really do. I think it's, I think it's the one for me. Right. Look at how clean that looks. Okay. You tell me, you tell me what you like in the chat. I want to know. I want to hear it. We're going to keep working on this thing, but I'll tell you for all of these, the categories are starting a little too low. So I just grabbed all of them and lifted them up, okay? And I think, let's just keep going with this because I'm digging this right now. I'm gonna take remote jobs, workout. I'm gonna get rid of the other ones for now. I'm gonna keep going with my single column here. So single column, why don't we do that? I'm just gonna duplicate the one that I have there. And here's a fun tool that I always like to use inside of XD. I'm just going to grab all of them and I'm going to distribute, just do a little distribution tools there, which actually did not work, but that's okay. It didn't work for me that time. Not because of something that XD did, but because of something that I did. Uh, okay. It's about 16 away. Let's go 15. That's again, zoom in here. Uh, 14 away. Let's go. 15. We're all lined up. We're locked up there. Let's get our rectangle, fill it with the blue, get our remote jobs graphic, delete this, bring our jobs, this inside here. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Okay. Let's go remote 
Now let's just put jobs because it doesn't fit. Jobs. 145 jobs. Boom. Okay, we get rid of that one. Okay, let's stop there. And let's turn off our guides and let's just assess a little bit. What do we like, okay? Uh, Aiken says, cool, but keep in mind you can't fix everything by jumping on your X-Wing and blowing up things. I Man, I always wanted to say this to you. I don't, maybe, are you talking to me? I'm not sure. I can't sure if you're maybe chatting with each other in the chat and not talking about Star Wars X-Wing stuff with me. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with this single column layout. And uh, Felix says that he's adopting my process going forward. Challenge everything. Ooh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I could be an encouragement. That's great. That's really cool, man. Um, let's just do a little bit more space. So I'm going to do 10 more pixels of space in between each one of these. And it's starting to come together a little bit, I think. It's starting to look like a thing. So I feel like we should do a product page now right let's get to a product page and then let's get prototyping because we got a little bit of time here um, I want to do some prototyping today because that's kind of the theme of this challenge for now when you prototype let's go over here we'll rename this product or actually not product but category okay the idea being we want to tap on games or jobs or courses and we want to be led to a specific jobs or games or courses page or or um, uh, or screen where we can then filter through all of these sub offerings okay you have categories being like the main offering or the filtering process and then you have subcategories inside of each one of those so let's do this we have a category and we have elements on each of these screens right so the same things let's let's close them up and actually let's let's do this let's clean up this file before we go we have our nav we have our intro text, we have our search bar, right? We have, uh, let's call this controls, controls here. And then you have um, category one, I'm just gonna call it cat one. Uh, cat two and cat three. Inside of your categories, you should have stuff, right? Like this is gonna be the uh, count, this is gonna be the title, this is gonna be the 3D image, and this is our uh, background. I'm just gonna say BG, okay? And you'd want, all these things are named specifically, okay? Um, oh, Aiken says he was talking to Voodoo Valve. I missed the Star Wars comment. Dang, I like Star Wars comments too. Okay, I'll have to be in it, try to be more in it on the next one. Um, so let's just do one, two, three, four, five. Let's just space these up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, just a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna drag a new version of this over, and now we're gonna call this one category. Category, okay? Now, I went in and I renamed all the elements inside of our first category, that courses group that we had. And what we wanna do is we want to now animate all the things onto the screen and off of the screen between these two screens. They have the same exact stuff on them. So let's do a quick prototyping example. For instance, uh, we would probably want both of our other categories to go off of the page, right? I would think so, yes. So let's go like this. We're just gonna get it over to the side. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna grab all three of them, group. No, you know what, let's not do that. Let's grab these two, group them together and call these extras, okay? And we'll do the same thing here, group extras, okay? That way, look, we can stagger them and then move the whole group off and it stays together. We'll bring the opacity down like that, okay? So far, so good. Then we're gonna take all of these things like this and let's do a similar thing. Let's move them up. I'm gonna move my search bar up and I'm gonna grab both of them and opacity them down. Okay, this thing also is gonna go up and opacity down and then we want to expand out our like our card right the like the color like the image like the whole deal so let's do that so we want to uh, straighten out the rounded corners bring this all the way up to the top 
okay? And we want to blow up our fun image and put it over here on the side. And then let's bring this up here and then let's grow it, okay? And let's just see if that works for now. Let's just see if we've done we've, we've done that correctly, okay? So if, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our prototype tab and we are gonna click on the element itself. We're gonna drag a friendly little handle over to our next screen and we're gonna say on tap, that's the trigger type, right? We're gonna tap on that area. We could drag, use all sorts of other ones, but we're gonna tap and we're gonna auto animate Okay, over to the category screen, we're gonna do ease in, ease out, and let's do it in point, let's do point nine seconds. We'll make it really slow, okay? Then um, what we wanna do is our cart controls nav. We wanna make sure our nav is on the top on both of our pages, right? Because we don't want things trying to skip levels or layers. That's gonna end up looking really, really funky. Okay, so what we want to do is I'm going to take uh, in the back over to the design tab, my avatar is going to go off to the side and I want to turn this into a little X. Let's animate it into an X, shall we? Oh, this is going to be fun. So we're going to stretch this out and we're just going to turn that 45 degrees and turn the other one 45 degrees, move this up into place and we'll turn both of them to the fill color of white, okay? And then, uh, yeah, and that'll look cool. And we don't, we do not need uh, the title and the count to be so close up there. It can be a little further down, okay? So now what we have is we've animated our icon to be something else. Let's go back to our prototype and now we'll click on the X and we'll lead back, same settings. XD automatically just sets those in place for us. Tap, auto animate, 0.9 seconds, really slow. I'm just gonna tell you right now, it's gonna be way too slow and it's way too slow intentionally so we can see the animation, okay? Um, here we go. Uh, let's go press play really quickly and let's hit this and see what happens, okay? See how everything auto animated? All of our elements moved. Let's focus on piece by piece here. Our, our little extra categories, they went ahead and zoomed out of the way, right? And then our elements here, like our all, all of our information, our image, all that stuff, that also, whoops, that also moved up and out of the way, okay? So, so far so good, I like that. Now I think we're gonna help this a lot by speeding up the animation quite a bit, but let's go back over to design here and let's find uh, these elements and this element. Okay, that is our, our text and our stuff like that. So search bar and intro text. I just wanna leave it where it was at actually. Search bar, intro text, okay? I just want the thing to go up and cover it. I think that's gonna look a little bit better, okay? Now let's come back over here into a prototype Let's click on our element and let's speed that up a little bit. 0 0.3 and let's try a different thing. Let's snap and when we come back over here, let's do the same thing. We'll do 0 0.3 and we'll change that to snap, just like so. Boom. And we get a little bit snappier. Everything just goes up and covers. It's looking pretty good, I like that. It might be a little quick in my opinion, just for me. Maybe just like a little bit quick. Um, so cat one, let's go, let's go like up to 0 0.5 seconds and we're just playing. We're just testing our prototype to see how things work. Boom. Just like that. That's a little smoother. I like that. Uh, yeah. What do we want to do with that categories thing? Okay. Well, I think that's pretty good for now. So far, so good. We got a couple more minutes, about seven more minutes until we do portfolio reviews. So make sure that you guys... Uh, submit your portfolios up in the portfolio review tab. That way I can give you some feedback and critique on your different portfolios. Allison Kohler asks, you could use the masonry grid for the list of specific classes. Totally could. Absolutely. I could bring it back in. I think that could be pretty fun. Um, uh, but I think I'm liking this one column. I, I think it's really good just for digesting this type of like this amount of information. Um, and 
I sometimes there's a need for masonry grids. Um, the masonry grid that I laid out there, I was just trying it, but usually masonry grids are used for different sizes of content and you don't want to force it if you don't need to, right? So like different sizes of images, different amounts of text. That's definitely a style you can go, but I think this is probably a little bit more controlled, right? We're aggregating content, we're controlling the content. So uh, I think we're gonna stick with this one, kind of like one page kind of deal, okay? So um, that being said, I think we're gonna introduce like a, a little bit of a new card style, maybe? So let's do a rectangle and draw this rectangle up. We got about five minutes until portfolio reviews. I'm really excited to look at everybody's portfolios. Make sure you post those up and we will select some. I'm gonna do this really fun rounded card style, okay? So I'm gonna drag this guy up right here and instead of grabbing my little rounded handles and rounding every corner, like left and right, you can hold down option and just round one corner at a time and you can see my inspector panel, it kind of, it shows me all of the different sizes for my corners. So I put 15 on the top left, 15 on the top right corner radius, right? So I was just doing those a little bit at a time. Now, kind of fun, we can do a little bit of a shadow here. That could be kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna do a little shadow and I'm gonna use my X axis, axis, I always say that wrong. I'm gonna go negative one, negative two, negative three, and then we'll bring the shadow down. It doesn't need to be really big, it just needs to be a very light, kind of subtle shadow, just bringing a little bit of depth there. It kind of jumps off the page. And let's bring this up a little bit further. And that means let's bring our fun information and our graphic up a little bit further. And I feel like we can get a little bit more out of this. So let's go 25 on each side. I feel like that's a little bit better, okay? So we're gonna have this card kind of slide up and it's gonna have a bunch of information on it. Um, and we want those that information to be fairly repetitive so it's easy to take in, I think. So let's do this. Uh, this is where we would maybe create um, a little bit. We're gonna leave the dimensionality piece that we used before. And we're gonna fill this just like that. And let's do little rounded rectangles here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy kind of thing. All right. We got some distance all around. Let's go back, I think that's a little too much. We're gonna take this down to about 10. I like that a lot better. Um, and then let's bring up our library and let's drop some stuff inside of these, okay? So that there's an image there. And I'm gonna show you a fun trick for dropping imagery inside of these in a little bit. Let's get a little bit of distance there and let's bring in some typography. So I'm just gonna grab these two and tomorrow we are most definitely going to, by the time we come back, we will mo I will most definitely have gone through this design, cleaned it up a little bit, and then probably started using the components panel quite a bit, where I've now fleshed out what typography I'm using, created systems out of it. But right now we're just what I call flowing. I'm just flowing. I'm just having fun. I'm just doing my thing. So 10 on the body copy size. Let's do a little bit more. We're at about 12, okay? Uh, let's do this. Let's call this one. Uh, these are courses, right? So 21 courses, um, home cooking, or let's do healthy cooking. Healthy cooking. And it, <laughs> learn how to cook uh, delicious, healthy meals right in your own home. Okay. So we are just going to create area text and let's see, we are about 30 pixels away. So I just need to bring that in one more. Now we're 30 pixels away. And let's bring these this text size down. We got a few minutes, literally like two minutes or so until we hit uh, portfolio reviews. So maybe we need to make this a little bit bigger. Maybe they need to be perfect squares. Do they need to be perfect squares? Maybe, let's go 70 and 70. 70 height, 70 width. That could be kind of cool. And then that'll give us a little bit more space this way. Uh, ba -bum. Uh, let's just come in here and make sure we're lining these.
these things up nicely. Okay, I'm gonna grab all of these. And I, here's a little trick I like to do before we get to our portfolio reviews. We've got like 30 seconds before we do them. I'm gonna hit rectangle and I'm gonna draw a white rectangle out. I'm gonna take the border off. I'm just gonna fill this with another color really quickly so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna bring it behind my item. We're gonna make little table cells, okay? Here and here, and then we're gonna stretch it out and give it, what kind of breathing room do we want it to have? Something like that, okay? Now we're gonna take the fill off. We're gonna put a shadow on it. Actually, we wanna fill it with white. And then we want to take the drop shadow all the way off and then we'll stretch this in. And now you have a perfect border that we can stretch out, grab all these elements and group them together and we'll call it course cell over here. See that? Now what we can do is move, whoops, move this whole, whole course cell, if I can grab it without messing other things up. Oh, I forgot. I didn't get my intro text in there. Boom. That's in there now. Okay. Now we should be able to move the whole thing. Press Command or Control R to repeat grid and then drag these guys down like that and create some versions. All right. And with that being said, it is time to review some portfolios. So I'm just going to grab a couple of these portfolios really, really quickly and make sure that I can get them on my screen. But if you didn't, you still have a couple more moments before uh, I get everything I need and get you back, get back going on here. Where is my, I lost my portfolio reviews tab, man. Ah, here we go. We got a couple to review. So let's just bring those up now here and here. And then we're also gonna jump onto Behance and we're gonna try to see if we can pull any off there as well. Or excuse me, Discord, not Behance. Let's go XD portfolio reviews. All right, we got it all set up. Sorry, that took a second. Let's drop over to my desktop. Our first portfolio of the day is on Behance and it's by Cars Zurbier. I probably said that wrong, uh, but they're from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Cars, oh, Cars is in the chat. He's like, yeah, there's my portfolio. That's me, dude. All right, this is exciting. Uh, Lars, or excuse me, Cars, you got some cool stuff on there. It says 16 year old web designer, UI UX designer, you're 16 Cars? Come on, you're killing me with the talent. That's not fair. Wish I was this good when I was 16. I wanna be like you when I grow up, Cars. It's really, really nice. Um, cars, you are in Amsterdam uh, and you've been a member for a while. I like that you say have a nice day at the end. That makes me really, really happy. Let's check out some of your work. I like, you know, even what's really cool about Behance is you can kind of customize it a little bit. He's got like this nice black logo up here for his own, like his own branding stuff. He's got this black background. It looks very, it looks nice. It just looks customized cars. So I just want to say right off the bat, nice presentation. Let's move and check out a piece of work that we got here. I really like donuts. So I want to look at that one in a second, but let's look at this first piece of work three events find any event you like all right so i'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom because that's what i like to do and scroll back up to the top all right so a little bit of web design here which is cool right this is what i like to see when i look at a portfolio sorry we're gonna jump right back but it says web designer okay and when the first thing i see is a web design that makes me happy because it makes me go you know who you are you know what you like to do and you're being honest about who you are so i think that's really really cool Let's just check it out. I like the background image. It's nice. Uh, something we were talking about earlier in the uh, in the stream was contrast. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to use uh, imagery behind and put typography on top of it. Um, you've definitely nailed it here. You got good contrast. The white stands out. You put a little dark overlay there. It looks really, really nice, but you can still see through to the action. So it has energy. It feels like an event site. And then it's exactly like uh, from a user experience perspective, exactly what you would want to see, which is you'd want to see like immediately the ability to search for like to search for the types of events, right? Events about log and get started. But your real main call to action here is at the bottom here where people can start searching and finding events. So that's great. Really easy to understand what these are. This goes to kind of like usability stuff. Um, you know, what Cars has done is 
you know, does it look like a traditional, like a super duper traditional input field, like where somebody could tap into it and go? Not necessarily, but it is identifiable. It's, it's, it still looks beautiful. It still looks really modern and elegant, but you can tell that this is, these are the places you're supposed to click right here, right here, right here, and start inputting information. So I think you've kind of bridged that gap nicely. Um, I think uh, the call to action is pretty clear. Um, I like, I, I don't like seeing cop UX copy that says stuff like not determined. I feel like that's a little mechanical. So in an example like this, I'd like to see something like when, like some sort of fun uh, verbiage that's there, right? And you might want to work on the copy, something like when, right now, baby, or something silly, you know, something that brings the same kind of energy you have from this visual that's right up here on the screen. I want to, I want that to be brought down into the like actual copy itself. Same thing for a headline, find any event you like. It's nice. It's just generic enough to like, to not really ruffle any feathers, but it doesn't stand out. So I want that, I want that personality in the brand tone to kind of come out. So I actually have a video on my channel with, where I interviewed a real, really, really smart person. Her name is uh, Janine Duff and she is a brand, like she does, uh, she's a copywriter and like a content uh, brand language stylist. I think that's the term, but she talks a lot about like really like fixing a brand's uh, tone and verbal language to really match like the visuals as well. All right, so let's scroll down. Really nice stuff, um, upcoming events. Um, so just a nice grid, like right laid out here. It's something we were talking about grids. Like this is exactly what you would expect to see from a site like this. I just want to see them. I love the ability to kind of like filter things out. For some reason, my mind says I might like to see this over on the left-hand side instead of over here on the right-hand side. I want to see persistent control. So maybe, maybe a version where it's like up above everything or you kind of crunching this into a three column, like a larger three column layout for these cards. And then this filter is crunched down a little bit and then tucked over here persistent down on the left hand side. It's another version you can do. I'd like to see the mobile version of this as well because mobile versions of websites like this, uh, you know, they can be, they can be tough. So I'd like to see how you, you integrate this filter and everything. It probably goes one column top, I'm expecting. But um, I think another good thing that Cars is doing here, we wanna to get to some other work really quickly, but another good thing that Cars is doing here is he's really being specific and intentional in how he's using the accent color with primary, secondary, and tertiary actions. Like as I scroll up and down, you can see the primary actions are to get started, to search, to book tickets. This is where you want to send the user. And then other actions like secondary options like read more or kind of like working on filters, these are secondary, so they shouldn't jump out at you. They shouldn't be overbearing. If everything is important, then nothing's important. Cars has done a really good job here of showing what's important. And then he's scrolled down and done a little bit of kind of like corporate market marketing site stuff. Who are we, what we do, and why choose us? I like this. Again, I think this is pretty cool. Like, um, I don't think this represent, this is the place personally, like I think information should be really, really calculated really gridded, really systematic. But down here is where you have like some of the, the room, the space to do some fun stuff. I would like to see a little bit more personality come through here. That's all I'm saying. Maybe challenge yourself to try something a little bit out of the box here. Um, but all in all, a really, really cool project. Let's look at one more off uh, cars is, I gotta look at this donut one because I love donuts. Is this just a graphic? That's a cool donut graphic. It's like kind of a hero, like the header of a website. Let's look at this. I like a little mobile stuff too, really quickly. Uh, welcome back, Brian. Oh, look, we got a little, uh, this looks familiar, a little card style. And this is another really great way, horizontal scrolling rows to kind of like uh, organize a lot of information. Again, I think this is really good. I think we're doing something really, really similar, aren't we? Cars, you to man, I like what you're doing. I'd maybe a little bit softer. This is like a little, again, it's a little bit hard in my opinion, like maybe softening some of these edges, um, kind of working on your border radiuses, but the layout is legit. It's super nice. The contrast is super nice. The colors are super nice. The contrast right here is a little bit rough on this easy, medium, hard. Even though it's inactive, I'd still like to be able to read what it is. Maybe think about that stuff, but really, really good work overall. We have another one, Allison Kohler. She's also in the chat. Allison, what's up? How are you doing? Get to look at your portfolio right now. Let's look at her website too, as we're going. So we have her, her Behance profile. And let's look 
at Allison's website. I like this kind of portfolio. I'm a really, really big fan. Um, just getting straight to the work, Allison. It lets me know you're serious. Let me get a drink of water. But I really, really like this type of portfolio. It jumps right to the point and gets right to the work. This seems like you do a lot of different type of work, varied work. So you're like a generalist designer. You can kind of do it all. You're a jack of all trades. Uh, this Thunder Canyon Brewery craft beer packaging. Let's take a look at that and just see the layout of your portfolio. Super nice. Love it. A little bit more case study. I like that. You can also do this on Behance. You can do case study stuff there as well. Let's go back over to the home page. I'd like to look at a little UX and UI stuff since you kind of do it all. Nice, very, very nice. The colors, the presentation's nice. I like the little descriptions, persistent. Ah, really nice case study because we get a little bit of stuff about user flows and wireframes. This shows me your process, which I'm always a really, really big fan of. I'm always a big fan of seeing not just the final kind of version of things, but I also want to see, um, I also want to see like how you got here. I want to see the long division, right? So let's go back over and check your Behance and see if you got anything going on. Oh, look. Allison's participating in XD Daily Creative Challenges. She did one recently. Let's see. Very nice. Good stuff. I like, you know what? I actually really like these. I see these a lot, especially with the XD Daily Creative Challenge going on, where people condense all of the challenges into one long project. I think it's really fun. It shows that you are honing your craft. I think I might prefer this for the Daily Creative Challenges to see stuff over and over, which by the way, Howard Pinsky's coming up pretty soon with the Daily Creative Challenge, the XD Creative Challenge. You should stick around for that. Look, this shows me, oh, Allison, can I make a recommendation? Some of this UI and UX stuff that you've done, and maybe because it's more recent or you, know, you just had the time, this stuff belongs on your actual domain portfolio. The only UI UX stuff that I see here Oh, I see you have it here. I do think on your portfolio, you should break these out into individual mini case studies instead of just having this one. I'd like to see a little bit more because right now it looks like you're a generalist, but mainly you do print and packaging. And if you were interested in doing UI UX, I would greatly appreciate to see more of it. And this is really good stuff. It's clean, it's modern, it's nice. The little mini case studies are digestible. Can we just give it up? Can we just give it up for Allison and mini case studies? Because they're kind of crushing it. I love it. Hello. Appreciate this. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. I need to appreciate this because I liked it a lot. Where did it go? Where did it go? Daily Creative Challenge. Boom. Back here. Appreciated it. Loved it. So good. Actually, I've got to go back here for Lars as well. Really like it. Appreciate it. So, so nice. Let's just go right back over here. I really like these a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, let's see really quickly if we have any, any more that got added to my portfolio review list. No, that's it. So let's go check the B hands really quick, shall we? Let's go back over. There's Allison right there crushing the game. Let's see a uh, hole right here. Here's another piece. We got a few more minutes here. This is Costadin, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name because I would kill it. But this is a really nice logo for this application. A no name restaurant. I kind of like the humor. I'm kind of into the humor, like a little bit of sarcasm in there. Um, all right, let's dig in. This is a really nice presentation. Uh, MVP app prototype for the franchise restaurant in New York City. Help people save the time by ordering and picking up food. Okay, I'm gonna just blow this up a little bit all the way full screen. Let's take a look. I think it looks really clean. You know, I'll, I'll be really honest. It looks a little bit more like a mobile website and less like an application. Maybe that's what you were going for. I, I think this is a really good lesson in kind of understanding designing for the platform because the layout, some of the layouts are really beautiful. Again, contrast, great colors, great imagery, great art direction, great. But what you have to worry about is tabs feel a little bit like uh, websites in 2005, just a little bit, right? These types of kind of folder tabs, not so great anymore, right? Um, and so this looks a little bit more like a website. Also, be really, really careful about boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. It can feel a little, start to feel a little bit cramped, give it a little bit more breathing room, okay? Uh, that's what I'd like to see. Um, but all in all, I think it's a really nice case study. I think the work is really nice. I just think you got to watch out for a few of those little 
user interface, those common UI patterns, design patterns. So um, that's definitely something to think about there. Let's close this project up. Let's appreciate it because I'm all about showing the appreciation. I love it. Well, uh, do we have time for one more really, really quickly? Do we have time for one more? Let's do this. Haley. Oh, Haley's in the chat. Haley, are you there? Oh, man. Uh, Haley, I hope you're here because we're about to look at some of your stuff. And I really like the way it looks so far. Let's look at this. The National Park Experience. Uh, we are getting... Oh, this is nice. This is kind of a little bit of an illustrative style. Okay. Very family friendly. Um, I like it. The colors, I think... I think it's probably, you know, when it comes to like national parks, the, it's, there's a reason the colors are a little bit more muted. Um, and uh, like, so I think that that's good. I like the play of shapes. I think you should just watch out a little bit for the spacing and these icons. They're not as legible as they could be. So maybe bumping up the size, watch out for this active state. It messes up the contrast a little bit, but I'm liking a lot of this. I think this is a hard color combination here. So just watching out for those, but really it's a fun, playful app. I think it's supposed to be. I love the case study. I love the wireframes and the wireframes are even kind of like molded into the style of the case study, which I really like. So I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much for submitting Haley Joel because that work is absolutely amazing. All right, why don't we kick back over to XD and keep on designing. Thank you guys so much for submitting your portfolios. We got about, uh, let me see, like 10 more minutes left in the stream. We're gonna get a little bit more work done. Uh, but good job to Haley, good job to the other people who submitted their portfolios. Tomorrow, we're gonna be looking at some of the challenges and reviewing some of those challenges from Howard's, uh, the kickoff of the daily creative challenge today. So uh, if you are in, uh, or if you're here, you're gonna wanna stick around for Howard's stream because that's gonna be a lot of fun. So um, I love that everyone's like encouraging each other and congratulating each other in the chat. It makes me really, really happy. Okay, I'm gonna take our image and I'm gonna take my shadow and just kinda chill it out because that line was a little bit harsh. I want it to be real soft like that, okay? And the cool thing about this is because I had it evenly spaced, right, on both sides, I can actually just space it all the way up against each other, okay? And that's actually the spacing that we're looking for, just like that, okay? So nice and easy, looking pretty good. I like it. Now, here's the cool thing, ready? Uh, we have these table row cells that fit right in there, uh, and we can keep messing with them if we want. Like that, boom, boom. And we can come into our repeat grid, go back to zero. We're just working on spacing. I'm having fun with spacing right now. And we're even gonna give, we're gonna cheat a little bit and just space it out a little bit more from the top, okay? Now let's do a fun thing where I'm just gonna grab like all of my uh, my images here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Actually, excuse me, I'm just gonna grab one image and I'm gonna bring up my library and I'm gonna grab multiple, like boom. Let's grab a few of them. Let's drag them all in. And then it just goes ahead, it went ahead and it auto kind of like just slapped all of them in there for me, which is really, really nice. So now we can change this one to home workouts, like that. What does this one look like? This one looks like, um, I don't know what that could look like, uh, study subjects. These are all things you can do from home, maybe things you didn't know you could do, right? Uh, uh, routines and habits. These are all courses, right? We're thinking these are all courses that you can do. Home workouts on study, uh, how to study. Let's just call it how to study, something like that. And then this one can be uh, arts and crafts 101, not 1201, 101. So we're just kind of adding some of those. All right, that's looking pretty cool. Um, all right, so uh, Car says he likes my website. Thank you, Cars. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna grab my repeat grid thing there and I'm gonna grab my uh, rectangle that we're actually just gonna, let's just name that really quickly. I'm gonna name that card in my layers panel. I'm gonna grab these. I'm gonna group them together and call this courses card. Okay, just like that. Let's close up these other elements. Now, 
we want this to animate in as well. So keeping prototyping in mind, the basics of prototyping before we finish out our day today, I got like five minutes left, we have time to finish up our animation or prototype. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna take my repeat grid and move it down like this. And then I'm gonna take the whole thing and move it down to the bottom of the screen. And I'm gonna bring the opacity of the whole thing down, okay? Now, when we prototype, we should see the card come up just like that. Whoop. Nice, and everything, I kind of like, I don't usually use snap in the prototyping easing, but I do like, I like it here for some reason, because everything just kind of snaps up. Now we could get crazy and have a little bit more fun. You guys want to try some things? Let's try some things. Let's bring the opacity to this up. If we wanted to, let's see, could we? We could if we wanted to. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where I might th I might think about ungrouping the grid, okay? And the same thing in here. I might think about ungrouping the grid. And here's why. Because I might have this really fun opportunity to one, two, three, four, five. I'm holding down shift and one, two, three, four, fiving everything over. Because it's possible now that we'll see a little bit of movement over to the side and you might need to do them even more I'm not sure um, but I want to explore something also that I think could be kind of fun so uh, we didn't really need to ungroup the grid I don't feel like that really added anything to our animation right do you feel like that it didn't really so let's do this uh, let's go over to prototype and you see we have one trigger added here one interaction right let's add another interaction on here really really quickly before we go because we got like a few minutes left um car says i'm working so fast i wish it would work that fast man cars don't you mess with me don't you, you little 17 year old virtuoso don't you mess with me because you're so talented all of you guys are so talented i like being here with you all right let's add a second interaction because did you know that adobe xd has now uh, came out with a recent update that allows you to do multiple interactions on a single element. So we can either tap this, but let's add another one. Let's add a drag trigger too, okay? So now we have, here's our tap trigger, okay? Oh, we didn't finish adding it. Drag, cool. We wanna auto animate, and where do we wanna go? We wanna go to, uh, oh, we wanna go to category, just like that, okay? So now we can tap it or drag it. See, let's zoom in here top right. See, now it has the little icons next to it that tells you what's what. So we have a tap trigger and we have our drab trigger. You can tap on either one of them and to edit them and mess with them. So let's auto animate over to category. Good, I like it. Uh, and why don't we come over here like this and let's add a drag trigger there, auto animate. Let's go back to uh, home two, I think is the name of our card. Yeah, this one. This is the one we really like here, right? So let's prototype that and check it out. Uh, whoa, that's not right. Right there. Boom. Here we go. Now we should be able to drag. Oh, we're dragging up and dragging down. Drag that up, drag it down or tap, tap, so that's fun, we have multiples. Um, let's just really quickly do a little bit of mind blowing stuff here. Let's grab it, let's add a third interaction on it just for fun. I do wanna point something out before we add the third interaction on it. Here's what I wanna point out is that when you do the drag trigger, you are intuitively telling, uh, especially with auto animate, you're telling Adobe XD, I wanna drag in the direction of wherever this goes. Does that make sense? So when I press play, you can see uh, these elements, I can't drag them down. I can't drag it to the left or to the right. I can drag it up because that's where the element goes, right? See that? Same thing on our card. I can't drag it up because it doesn't go up. I can drag it down just like that and it'll go. Or I can click on stuff. Okay, so keep that in mind. You gotta drag towards where you've actually animated things to the direction you've done. That's, it's pretty intuitive, I like it. Let's add one more. Let's, add, let's do some fun here. Let's add a voice command here and let's do the word courses, auto animate over to category um, and then we should be able to snap and do the whole thing. So now 
when we press play, we're going to get a little, uh, the ability to hold down the space bar and then we should be able to say the word courses. Ready? Let's try it. Uh, I have to do this off my screen uh, and speak towards my computer, not the microphone. Let's try it. Courses. Did it work? No, it didn't work. Let's try it again. Oh, it worked. It just took a second. A little bit of a delay. Here, let's try it again. Let's play our prototype again. Remember, I'm just, I'm holding on the space bar and saying the command. Here we go. Courses. Boom, and it goes by itself. And now we can do voice triggers as well. Mind blowing, I know, it's totally amazing. Well, uh, with that said, we are going to say goodbye. We're gonna say aloha for now. That was day one of Adobe Live UI UX with me, your host, Jesse Showalter. We'll be right back here same time tomorrow. But before we go, let's take a look at the schedule. We have a minute to do that before we go. So coming up next is Adobe Daily Creative Challenge, the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky, and then you'll be finishing out your day with a sketch party with Kathleen Martin. And uh, this is gonna be the schedule again tomorrow. So we will see you tomorrow. It's been a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. Thanks for submitting your portfolios and sticking around for the entire stream. We'll see you tomorrow.